Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm back with another video. And in this video, we are going to develop a simple blog API, which is connected to a database and which reads, creates and reads blogs. Uh, the, database will be, the database which we'll be using will be MongoDB. And the takeaway, the thing that you'll learn from this video is to connect your app to MongoDB Cloud and interact with it. Well, what's MongoDB Cloud? MongoDB Cloud is also called MongoDB Atlas. And it's a, it's a great, fully managed cloud database developed by the same people that built MongoDB. Atlas handles all complexity of deploying, managing, and healing your deployments on the cloud service provider of your choice. So basically it's a, a cloud service which gives you database, which you can connect with your app and uh, build cool stuff. That's it. And I'll expect some prerequisites that you <clears throat> must be having that's have now configured in your terminal. I talked, it about, I talked about it in the last video, go check that out. Postman for testing post requests. It's a free software. You can get it off the internet. It looks something like this. Brilliant software. As a web developer, you should have it. Account on MongoDB Atlas or MongoDB Cloud, which gives you 512 MB for free and one cluster also for free. And when you log in through a Google account, no credit card needed, no nothing needed. When you create your cluster, you'll come on the screen like this. And that's where you know that you have succeeded in creating your cluster. And you just need a database, uh, a user, uh, which has your database access for read, reading and writing to the database. And you, I just gave it admin rights so that it, it can do <clears throat> basically everything. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I, just to make it more neat, I have the steps listed down right over here. But but before that, you should also have express mongoose course dot env node mon um, install that through npm. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's. Now let's see what we have right now. I have initialized this app just to save some time over here. And I have my five dependencies, five packages installed. Uh, NodeMon and Express are pretty straightforward. Mongoose, well, what is Mongoose? Mongoose is an object data modeling library for MongoDB and Node.js, if you go by the definition. Simply, it's a mediator to talk, to help your Node app talk with the MongoDB. And that course is something that every web developer runs into. I'll talk about it later. And .env is something that we use for our environment files, which I'll also talk about in a bit. So as you can see over here, I have express, course, mongoose, and app, which is these constants uh, required. And uh, I have all the dependencies required. And then I'm also configuring ex using express.json for uh, because we'll be sending objects in our requests so we we use this which also gives us a nice middleware called body parser which can handle all the requests uh objects in the requests very neatly we are also using cores we are you uh, we are requiring the we're configuring the dot env package which will help us read the dot env file and that's pretty much it so let's see what our first step is our first step is to connect to your mongodb cluster and we'll use uh, you will use the dot env file for this but let's first go to the cluster that we have over here. Collect on connect. Click on connect. Sorry, connect on connect. Uh, connect your application. Just copy the string over here and uh, create your .env file and mongodb underscore URI. Just type this, open your code, open code, and there should be no space between the codes. So what, what, what we have over here is a username and password that you'll um, obtain when you create a new user. And test is the name of a database. And never show this .env file, uh, the credentials to anyone. Uh, so I'll just pause and write my credentials. I have my credentials filled out in the .env file. Never gonna open it because you should keep your credentials safe because if anyone has your credentials, they can write and read uh, to your database and that can be pretty disastrous. They can exceed your limit. And if you have credit card in, in the uh, if you have credit card details in your MongoDB, then oh, that, that'll be, you'll have a hard time <laughs> explaining them what happened. So anyway, uh, let's just connect to a database and just for uh, time's sake, just to save some time, I'll write this long piece of code over here. And uh, there you go, I'll just explain it. We are just create, declaring a constant called ConnectDB and it's an async method, very important to realize it's async. Otherwise, you'll, you'll lose a lot of time. I, I didn't put these keywords async and await over here, and it, I spent one night figuring out why I was not able to connect to database. And this thing over here, process env.mongodb URI, helps us to connect read.env, uh, the configuration, the constant we have declared in MongoDB URI, 
from the environment files. Now, why are environment files needed? Well, I also have an answer for that. Environment files are needed because for easy configuration, better security, and few production mistakes. I use it for better security because when I deploy these files to Git, and if I have my password stored right over here, right over here, if I'm storing that string over here, then everyone can see my password, and that defeats the purpose. But .env files are protected. Uh, it, they just it just fetches from there, and hence you don't um, display your password to the world. And what we are doing over here is we are asking Mongoose to connect to the database URI that we obtained from the cluster. And when it does, when it finishes this, it will display a DB connected thing so sign. If it doesn't, uh, it uh, it will log the error basically. That's pretty much it. I'll call this constant. I'll call this method and listening on port. There you go. DB connected. That's one step. One step already done. So let me just check this over here by typing a mix. Brilliant. Now we want to create a schema and a model. So for let's just quickly create a schema and a model over here. So our schema, I'll call it the block schema. And I'll be having, I'll type this using, be using Mongo schema for that. And I'll have a title in this, which will be of type string and it will be required without that it will throw a nasty nasty error and then i'll also have content which is this is going to be string and uh, created which will be data excellent now let's create a model of the schema which will be let i'll create a blog model and this will use mongoose dot model which will and let's just call this block schema and have block schema over here yeah so we are injecting over here and calling it blog excellent excellent let's just get to the blog bit over here now we have successfully created we have successfully done this let me type an x over there as well like that now we want to have a post request well how are we going to do that let's just first handle the error we'll have request or oh, not in the get not in the get method not in get method what am i doing <laughs> so if there is an error of any sorts just say that we have some error just just exit we don't want no errors error handling is very important in web development now we'll have a constant blog post. Let's have a constant, which will be a new blog. And it will have the title as something coming from the request body, and which will be title. And we'll convert it to a string before actually writing it to a database. Then we'll have another content, which will be body of content dot to string. So body parser is helping us to actually read that. And for created, we don't need anything. We'll just, as soon as we are, when we are creating this, we'll take the date of the time this blog post is being created. And just for security sake, we'll just, just so that we are satisfied that the blog post is actually coming, we'll do that. And then we'll save it by using this save um, function and it's good to actually do the error handling right off the bat so that it doesn't throw any nasty errors. If there is an error, then please return us that error. And if you are successful, if everything goes well, then just send us an object with the of the response that we are getting so that we are happy. All right, that looks good. That looks good. Now let's go to Postman. Let's just make sure that it compiles. Yeah, no problems, no problems with that. Let's just go to Postman. And let's just send, uh, uh, but what should we write? The title should be the first blog post. 
and the content is ABC. We'll just put a comma over here and let's click on send. Make sure it's a post thing. Connection refused. Let me look into this error right now. Hmm, interesting. Initially, when I was sending this through Postman, I was sending a post request, I got this connection refused, and that was because I was already using another, I, I was already connected to that through another terminal. So that's why. And now if we send it, it's saying that first blog post, and it's also giving us this nice unique ID, which we, we can use later for update and delete. I'll send just another something, the second blog post, just to show you guys how it shows. It gives us this response that we are aiming for. Excellent. I don't see any problem with this. We are getting what we want. It's also giving us the created date. And let's just check it out at the cluster. Uh, let's just give it a refresh. When we go to clusters, it should it should also reflect over here as it's we are writing to the database. Retrieving the list. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we see the block schemas, the first block post, the second block post. Excellent. Love it. Now let's just get these. That'll be That'll be a straightforward uh, function. We are uh, we we just use our model for that. We just type blog dot find dot when you find it when you find all the posts blogs, then just respond with a nice JSON object containing all those blocks. Let's just go over here and let's have was it blogs or, or blog. Ah, we need it to be blocks. There you go. We have our blog posts with us. So that that completes it's this step, this step, this step. Yeah. And now we are left to deploy it to now so that we can actually use it from the server. Easy piece of cake. We'll first of all, before we do that, let's let's just have a JSON file. I'll just copy that. Copy the JSON file. We can see it over here. Excellent. Now the thing to notice is that this .env file won't work in now, so we need to provide our own env configuration. MongoDB URI, we are specing it as this thing over here, which is called a secret in now.json, now JSON, uh, which is a secret. And how do you add a secret? It's now secret add, blah, 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 blah. So in your case, how you want to play it out is when you open your terminal, you just paste this now secret add MongoDB dash URI, and you paste that uh, place exactly the string you have in your .env file over here so that it's referencing that. So in this case, it will be MongoDB URI connect. You just paste this over here with your username and password. And then in my case, it's MongoDB URI.2. Uh, so I have stored my secret as this. So just put at your secret name, and that's pretty much it. That'll do the trick for you. Now just let me get rid of this and do, I make sure that it's just saved and I'll do now. I hope this is this video is not getting too long. Yes, yes, link to server, no, not right now, no. What's your project name? It can be API blog. This report, yeah. Let's just quickly have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I like how it's shaping up. So dot env files. We learned that dot env file is important, and in now dot json, you need to have this MongoDB URL in, in, um, over here with your secret in front of it. Oh wow! It has given us a very nice URL this time, and we don't we don't need to rename that. There you go, perfect. So now when we go to blogs, blogs, 
it won't it's giving us our blog <laughs> excellent as a measure of testing it out let's send a post request to this and then get it just to make sure it's a blogs it will be blog because a post route is blog and then send we should get this we should get this second blog post there you go it's on the server you can also write to it if you want to and there we have it this completes our last step deploying to now and there you go a fully functional app and i know i hope less than 12 15 minutes and that's it it's on the server now use it it's live <laughs> all right thanks guys if you have any questions leave it in the comments and i'll see you in the next